Hello everyone. Today I am joined here by a very, very, very interesting man. Uh, the first time I met him, he definitely gave me a very interesting perspective on life. And uh, I would just like to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself just now. My name, I'm Ignatius Jimguro, if you're new to the channel. So please subscribe, like, share and comment. With that being said, please introduce yourself, Vimpi. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> my name is Vimpi Fernoy. Um, yeah, I, I normally don't know how to introduce myself, <laughs> except I fill the gap in the community. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm one of the, how can I say it? Yeah. Suicide Prevention Namibia, I'm the owner and founder of that initiative. Mm -hmm. that's also online and then we do trauma mental health addiction mm -hmm. all those is the type of things that i currently do and yes 25 years in the youth ministry mm -hmm. and i understand you're a businessman <laughs> as well yeah yeah now on the side we need to like <laughs> <laughs> you need to make a little bit of dollars yeah yeah it's perfect so if someone were to click on this interview that we're doing when I ask the question, why do you think they should listen to you in terms of the mental health or whatever you have to share? Why would you say uh, this person should definitely listen to, to what you've got to say? I think it's one of the concepts when it comes to a life coach, because I'm also a life coach and a mm -hmm. health coach, is people don't want to hear another topic and another person who speak on mental health, but... If I tell you today that we can help you sort out your life within a time period of three months mm -hmm. um, by identifying, working on stuff, but also get through your journey to a certain place of start living and start enjoying mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And I think people want to, to focus on the end result to see if I listen to you, where can you take me to? Mm -hmm. And that and that's the concept we want to bring to people that you cannot make it on your own. You mm -hmm. need people. And yeah, everything that I teach people is stuff that I went through in my own journey mm -hmm. to get to a point of um, helping other people also find the joy of enjoy life and enjoy what they do by finding purpose again in life. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. And uh, when you when you talk about your experience as well, I remember you told me this the first time we met. Um, when I dive in a bit personal, you said you were a nine-time suicide survivor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that because when I heard the number, I still can't fathom my mind around it, and I just I'm still very curious. Tell me about yeah. that, in general. Um, yeah, it starts in childhood and that's when most of our stories went wrong. Um, basically of stuff happening in your childhood and a way to fit in and all that. But I think one of the things that most of my friends was also um, telling me is that maybe I must write a book how to survive your <laughs> suicide yeah. mission. But um, I think it's really in a desperate situation. So. What's quite interesting, eight, eight of the nine time was different than the last one, because the last time that I committed, or tried to commit suicide was in 2001. And that was my first year in the ministry. Mm -hmm. So the other times I cannot say that I was in ministry, but I was quite lost in that time. So it, it kind of had the despair and everything around that but the last one was quite different because I had purpose I have so many things in life to live for but I also have so many troubles of people telling you what you do is not how we will do it it's not the right stuff we don't think you can make it so it was quite different challenges that I need to face comparing to the previous one of don't have a purpose and don't have any reason for living mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it was quite a, a journey to get from there um, up to now, but it's possible, there's always hope. Would you say it was a weakness from your part? 
I, I would say that it's a weakness. You see, when it comes to, to mental health, um, and I think especially one thing that we underestimate is the fact that it happens to normal people. Mm -hmm. you, you don't see it coming. Yeah. You don't see all the issues until one day you realize you, you have a bad day and you have another bad day and later on it becomes a week and then a month. And when you end up in this moment of despair and hopelessness, that's the time where you realize, but I don't get out of this. And so many people, even when we speak to them in, in suicidal ideation, is the fact that people said, I didn't see that this coming. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like you, you caught off guard. Um, you don't know how to respond to it now. And, and I think one of the things that we try to focus on when it comes to suicide prevention is telling people it's never too early to ask for help, but it yeah. can be too late. Mm -hmm. Because you can underestimate the conditions that you live in. And, and people don't commit suicide out of one thing that went wrong. But it can be the last thing that triggered a lot of things and then you decide that I'm down. So yeah, and I think that's that's a difficult part of, of mental health and also suicide and depression. Mm -hmm. and it's the fact that we're not honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're in denial. We're the ones that say, um, I will make it. I make it so many times. Yeah. And instead of stand up and go find some help and get through your, mm -hmm. your stuff and get to the other side. Because if I think how long did it take me to reach out to other people? Because in the beginning I was reaching out um, to teachers, to spiritual leaders, to the principals of the school, but nobody take that confidentially. That everybody was making a joke out of that. Mm -hmm. You talk to your friends. So that was also my story of discouragement mm -hmm. not to reach out anymore. Yeah. But because people let you feel like there's something wrong with you instead yeah. of finding out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was quite a, a difficult time for me then. Yeah, that sounds quite tough as well. And you know, I've done a little bit of research on my part and uh, finding out that Namibia is some of the highest uh, suicide rates in general, especially among men. And another thing um, I also uh, researched on, uh, now that you mentioned how, how your story wasn't treated with confidentiality, is that I, I I read somewhere that one of the leading causes of, of, of this suicide rates is that people try to connect with others and then they are rejected. Now, uh, what the reason for rejection might be different, but um, to dig deeper into what this is saying is that uh, people yearn for human connection. And when this human connection is, is not provided or if it's not found, it kind of makes you lose this sense of belonging and also lose this uh, this sense of self. I don't know, would you agree with that? First of all, I don't agree with the rejected part. Mm -hmm. What we so often see, the moment that you reach out to your friends or family, um, people are not equipped to deal with that. So the first okay. response will be um, withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how to respond with you. Mm -hmm. So when you, your friends, if you go to your friends and you tell them like, I don't want to live anymore, people will often say, ah, oh, everybody have a bad day, let's drink and forget about that. Because we don't know how to respond in that. A <laughs> beer with a sundown. Mm. <laughs> so, so there's a lack in the community as well by equipping people to understand when people talk in certain ways. Because I think in so many radio interviews, the first thing that people want to know is what's the science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we don't see the science. Okay. We can tell people so many times of the science. And one of the things that you said that lead to us becoming rejection leads to performance. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at, at our younger generation and even the generation in in general is that people pretend whatever you see on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or WhatsApp is what I can make people believe this is who I am. But when you meet me for real then 
it's like an it's not the same person. So yeah. social media help us to create a how do they say they they help you to create and you can become the star of your own profile. Mm -hmm. So it's that Oprah Winfrey type of thing, everybody is a winner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and out of that place it becomes difficult because if you ask people how are you doing, everybody will respond fine, mm -hmm. but especially the young people mm -hmm. Fallen apart in the inside, and they don't know how to deal with that. Um, and they will not reach out; they will just say, "We are fine." And I think that's that's part of the difficult things of not seeing the signs, because mm -hmm. people know how to pretend when they respond. So I yeah. use mostly with young people the example of if, if you look at how many profiles you have in your life, if you with your parents, you react in a certain mm -hmm. way. If you, with your friends, you respond different. If you go to church on Sunday, you know, that's different people that you meet yeah, in the yeah. in the week. But but you see, there's already three profiles. And if I ask you the question, which one of those is the real you? Mm -hmm. And you're honest with yourself, none of that. Because you play the role of people, of the role for people to accept you. Mm -hmm. Because it's like the thumbs up. We we look for acceptance and mm -hmm. we look for people who appreciate us. And by the end of the day, we build our whole outlook of life on performance. And in the process of performance, it leads mm -hmm. to a way of losing my identity, mm -hmm. losing my purpose. I just perform. And I say to young people, you must understand I think we know what actors get paid for, for playing a role. Yeah. And we do it for free, <laughs> just to fit in. Yeah. So even if you use it for the right way, you can make money, but we do it for free. Oh, you and, put it like that. <laughs> and we lose everything we have. That's part of who we are. Mm. And that's what leads to an emptiness um, where we feel like and I cannot impress people, I cannot satisfy mm -hmm. people. Um, whatever I do yesterday that please them, don't please them today. And you lose yourself. You're not happy. Mm -hmm. be because you just try to keep everybody around you happy. Mm -hmm. And and that's the sadness of everything leads to, to an emptiness that mm -hmm. causes depression and mental health and suicide. Okay. Okay. Speaking about happiness, I how important would you say happiness is to your life? Because I, I seem to think, um, you know, oftentimes as people, we tend to forget that happiness also takes work. And sometimes people think it's this feeling that you're supposed to reach, uh, for, you're just uh, supposed to move somewhere to a different country and suddenly you'll be happy or you're supposed to make a, a lot of money and then suddenly you'll be happy or drive a nice car and then suddenly you'll be happy. So um, could you please elaborate on that, on what is happiness to you and what it takes for it in order or, or how you see happiness and how someone can achieve happiness for themselves? I think the first valid point that I want to make is happiness starts with you. Mm -hmm. Nothing else can bring you happiness and we see it so many times, especially in the relationships, when you lose that specific person, it's the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Because your identity and your happiness was built in something else. It can be built in a car, it can be built in your family, <laughs> yeah. anything that... Yeah. But the moment that I lose it, I'm not mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. If there's a fight, if that person is not happy, I'm not happy. And happiness starts here. So, if I have happiness and I can find my happy place and happiness, yeah. everything is an add-on to that. But the day when somebody leaves my life, it's not the end, because mm -hmm. I'm still happy. Yeah, I'm sad, I'm crying, but I'm still happy. I can mm -hmm. live with that. So that's the big thing of, we build our happiness in the things around us. Um, instead of, like I said, if I use the profile thing, when will you be happy if you just try to please everybody? What about you? What makes you happy? What's the things you want to achieve? And, and people want to conform you into what they want you to be. Mm -hmm. That you can also contribute to them in certain ways. Because we know even our relationships is mm -hmm. what we can get out of people. Mm -hmm. If they cannot give us that, 
you don't have money on a Friday, you're not mm -hmm. invited to drink with us. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. the type of relationships that we have mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. But but what what if I can sit at my house and I'm content with who I am and I'm happy and I put all the chants that I want to listen um, and I don't need need people to be there. But when there's people, it's fine. But when there's not people, it's also fine. Because how many times when you want to do something, you call a lot of friends and everybody is busy. And what happened? You said that you are. Yeah. I do the opposite. I yeah. still go and do what I want to do. Ah, do it yourself. Yeah. Okay. Because that's part of my happiness. Yeah. If they don't want to join, yeah. so I still go out and enjoy myself. Yeah. The other thing is, if they were there, mm -hmm. it would be more fun. Mm -hmm. But they also have joy and happiness. But yeah. now they sit at the house, so tomorrow, when I corner them and I ask them, how was your night? It's like, yeah, maybe mm -hmm. we're supposed to go with you. Yeah. So then I was out, I enjoy my night yeah. and they still wondering. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I think a lot of people can definitely learn a lot from that. I remember one time uh, I was in grade eight and um, me and my group of friends, we planned to go out for the weekend to the movies. Huh? So I, I I had a German stepmom. She was very, uh, always be punctual. <laughs> and I was punctual. I arrived there at 3 p.m. Everyone else, I'm texting on the group. No one is responding. The movie is about to start in 30 minutes. So fast forward, I end up watching this movie alone and on Monday I go back to school. I tell everyone I watch the movie alone. They all start laughing. Mm -hmm. like, why are you laughing? And, the, and it, it was such a, a joke. Like, Next time when we make a plan, don't, don't come unless we confirm in the morning and all that. And I never did an experience alone ever again uh, during my high school career. Mm -hmm. And now that you mention it, I think back to it and, and to this moment of me in my young years. And I was like, you know, I missed out on a lot actually that I could have enjoyed because there are things that I, I do alone, uh, for example, go play some basketball or, or eat an ice cream. I, you enjoy it when you're alone as well. And, uh, you know, so <laughs> thank you very much for mentioning that. It's definitely something. And, uh, and then t tell me, Bimpi, you know, just to move on onto other positive uh, uh, topics as well. Uh, can, you, can you tell me of a, of, a, of a happy moment in your childhood that you can say, this moment, I remember it very well. It was very nice for me. And, yeah. Yeah, I think there was a lot of happy moments. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, we always remember the sad part of life. <laughs> so I always, when I speak to people about um, childhood trauma, I said you will not remember how your your cake looked like on your seventh birthday, mm. but you will remember when there was no cake. Yeah, why is that? <laughs> That's how the brain works. Mm. So it gets stuck. So, so I think one of my great memories um, was. Part of, I'm always a nature type of person. I, I like the, as they call it, bush therapy. Mm -hmm. So if I could be in nature, that was my happy place. Yeah. Um, so I remember even in school we have camps and holidays that we attend the camps. Mm -hmm. in Leonardville, so most people will not even know that. There's yeah, a place in the yeah. called Leonardville. Yeah. But it's a small place, I think smaller as Whitflake. Okay. Um, but we have camps there and one of the things was, one of our camps we have a hiking trail mm -hmm. where we walk in the white Norsop and the black Norsop where they come together and, and one of the things that stood out for me was the awesomeness of how two rivers come together but in a triangle that we walk, okay. the scenery changed. The, Every, say, few kilometers, you have a different, then it's just rocks. Mm -hmm. Next moment, it's the dunes, and the next moment, oh, wow. you're just in the savannah field. Yeah. And, and how in a small area, things can change with so many things. So, mm -hmm. so my, my childhood memory is that place of happiness was always in nature. Always in nature. Yeah. Because yeah. I think even grow up in Hubavas, um was not quite of the greatest experience because we don't have access to a lot of things, um, but we always make the best out of that. Okay. So, so one of my last experiences of school mm -hmm. was um, in the hostel, there was a fish pond. 
Yeah. But my father was swimming in that fish pond many, <laughs> many years <laughs> ago, and my whole time in hostel, that pool was empty. Was he trying to catch fish or? <laughs> no. So yeah. um, I decided before I leave this hostel, yeah. I need to swim in the fish pond. So, oh, yeah. so I was filling the fish pond over seven days <laughs> just yeah. to get water yeah. in that, but the tap was next to the. Um, superintendent of the hostel okay so the tap was making a noise so, yeah. so you can hear in the evenings when the tap is running because yeah. we need to get the water so every night you go and close the tap uh -huh. so then we are Did behind the schedule again, again. <laughs> but yeah i remember that as, yeah. it was a swim yeah. that was worth that but you also get punished <laughs> but uh, I, I think in the end it was still worth it. Yeah. It? Uh, it's it's amazing what nature can do for 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 your soul in general. Uh, so you basically grew up on a farm. If, if, did I get that right? Yeah, we we had a farm. Um, so I was weekends in the farm, and then during the weekend, okay, that we was in the hostel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I think it was still good times because you. You're part of a community, you're part of people sharing rooms and but there's always company around you. Um, so I think that was a good time as well. Mm -hmm. But I must tell you, if people see me today and they see me when I was in school, and they are quite fond of where I end up yeah. in my life because yeah. I was one of the rough guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all of my teachers know mm -hmm. me by name. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very good relationship seeing most of them every day. Not because they like me, but because there was issues. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that was part of the rebellion that we have in that time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's quite an interesting story, definitely. And I think uh, in general, um, I also want to know now, what are some moments in your life that you would say, this is a challenge you face, um, that changed your perspective on life. Uh, we, it can be now more challenging in the sense of it can be in terms of work or or personal. So a challenge you face that you just said this was definitely a life changing moment. I don't think we have enough time for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I say many times the stuff that I went through from childhood up to now. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not something we, we are not in a competition with this, but mm -hmm. even sometimes when I speak to homeless people, I realize that I even go through worse things that they go through. Mm -hmm. But the end of my life is the difference between me and them. Mm -hmm. It's not that we, I am different than them. So I think how we respond to that was the change. One of the main things, as I can say, that was a a really big turning point was in 2001. That was one of my toughest years. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, I said that was also the first time, he, first year in ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes. So around that decision was when I decided I want to go full time in youth ministry, I was disowned by my parents. Mm -hmm. So I was supposed to do everything and even decided between them or do I follow what I need to do. So that was the last time that I attempted suicide. That was in October. And then in December, I have a car accident. So I was not even one day at the coast. And then in my car accident, one of my youth of 16 years died in a car accident. Mm. So we were four people, including me, that ends up in ICU and I remember while I was in a coma that the doctors tell my parents that you can greet them, you will never see them again. And I think one of the things that I experienced in that time of my life was that God asked me one question, what did you do with what I asked you? Yeah, so I think the, the difficult part was I couldn't tell God, yes, but the people make it difficult for me, yes, but my parents, 
that was not the question. The question was, what, what did you do with what I asked you to do? Mm. And that becomes one of my motives in, in life by just measuring myself. Am I still busy doing what I need to do? Because mm. we cannot do everything for everyone. Mm. But there's something that we can do. And that's what I was trying to build my life on and focus on what I can do instead of what I cannot do. Mm. And I think it was quite a turning point because a few hours after that, I was awake in Bantuk in the ICU. Um, and I believe it was a second chance, but I have so many <laughs> second chances. I have two near death experiences. Mm -hmm. So, and every time it's like, and I get a chance and then I have to rediscover what is, what is my next, mm -hmm. next episode, my next purpose that I need to do. And I think it was one thing that may help me and so many things because especially after I get out of the hospital, one of the things that God said to me is you need to face your stuff. Okay. Stop running, stop avoiding stuff. And that's not a difficult or an easy thing to do. It was quite difficult because if something bad came up, we, we just want to file that. Yes. yes. So, yeah. So I think that was one of my toughest journeys that I need to go through, but there was a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the stupidity of everything, yeah. as I say to people last week, I'm so glad this stuff happened to me because it's who I am today. Mm. But I need to get through that stuff. Yes. Uh, there's one way that you can get through a storm and it's right through that. Mm. You cannot pray that there's no storm. Yeah. Yeah. You just need to get through that. Yeah. Wow, wow. I heard this story somewhere that, um, you know, when there's a storm, cows, they run away from the storm and they will keep running and running until the storm hopefully stops. But bulls, they run straight through the storm and then they're finished with it and it's done. If you run away from the storm, it will chase you forever if you're in your life yeah. and it will never stop. It's just a delay. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. That's very empowering to hear. And so tell me, um, if someone is watching right now, maybe they've, uh, they're going through a rough patch in their life, what would you say to them to encourage them to keep them going to, to, to something that might be very beneficial to their life, something that they can start doing now to take care of themselves, to bring themselves better into, uh, into a better position? I don't think they want to hear that, but... My advice will be take back your life. Mm. Um, take your responsibility for what, what you can do. Mm. We so easily blame people. Mm. Try to find a reason why I am like I am. And there's the, the hard way is the right way. Mm. You face the stuff. Every day I have challenges. You don't like your workplace. Don't quit. Don't. <laughs> Sit at your house because you don't like the boss. I work for so many bosses that don't like me. But I decided my motivation is my pay. If uh -huh. they want to let me go, they let me go. Yeah. But I don't quit. Yeah. And and I think it's it's one of the characteristics in life that's missing. Mm -hmm. People don't learn endurance mm -hmm. and perseverance. Okay. So take on the hard stuff. Um, find somebody who can walk with you. Because that's one of the things that I I say to people, I'm the thick kind of person. If I help people, I journey with them. Mm -hmm. It's not I walk in and walk out. Yeah. And so many people want a quick fix. Mm -hmm. You just want to go and see people for once and then everything is sorted and move on. Yeah. And the stuff didn't come overnight, so it will not be gone over time. Mm. And I think the main thing is when people stand up, take responsibility for my life, stop blaming, and I face the stuff that's on the mm. table, one by one. Mm. You cannot deal with everything. Because yeah. um, everything is based on choices. Mm. The choice that you make determine the outcome in your life. Mm. If things is not right, make other different mm. choices. Because okay. if you don't make any new choices, Nothing will change. Yes. So if you currently stuck and and you want to change it, try something new. If you want to know if you change nothing, how it will look like, look at the past five years. Yes. Then you will know how it looks from the next past okay. year. 
five years, yeah. but it will also escalate. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, and and just to clarify, if, um, when I hear you speak about taking responsibility for your life, I would just say what my understanding is. My understanding is that responsibility doesn't mean that everything that has happened in your life is your fault, but it means that from now onwards you will be taking action for everything that has happened in your life. You have accepted it as it is, and now you're taking, uh, you're accepting that I will respond this way and that way, and I get to choose how my life will be from now onwards. Are we in agreement to that? Yeah, I think part of the addiction stuff is also the, the serenity prayer mm -hmm. where we say, let me change what I can change. Mm -hmm. If I cannot change it, let me accept yeah. that. Yeah. And I think so many times is, um, I cannot choose yeah. what happened to me, but I can choose how yeah. I will respond to yeah. it. Okay. And the response that I have, determine the outcome that yeah. I'm going to see. Yeah. Well, that's good, that's good. I, there was a point I think I'd say I used to look down on people that are, are addicts and maybe experiencing tough moments in their lives, even though I've experienced my own. But And then um, I, I, I read something that said that um, have you ever, uh, can, you, can you imagine the worst moment in your life? And imagine experiencing that on a very cold night, no roof, no food for days, and perhaps not even water for days. And tell me that you would never consider taking drugs. You know, something like that. I don't know if it was that exact line, but you know, it makes me be sort of understanding as well, because if you try to understand that where everyone is coming from, it also helps you help them better, I think. Also, it helps you kind of reason on a level where you can understand each other and come, come, come to common ground and see how you can help each other and move forward, isn't it? Yeah, let me explain one thing when it comes to addiction. Addiction is often a coping mechanism mm. because of difficulties. Mm. And I say it so many times is the fact that it's easy to tell people are corrupt, but everybody have a price. <laughs> You will yeah. say no for a thousand dollars, but if the money goes up to a million, yeah. will you still say no? Maybe not. <laughs> and, and you see, that's what I said. Everybody, you, you find children in Katatura that do stuff for five dollars mm -hmm. because five dollars means so much to them. Yes. Um, and they need to do desperate and bad things just to get five dollars. And, and, and I think so many times of because of desperation, we make wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. and, and we we need to get the knowledge to make better decisions when it comes to that. But one thing that I, I believe in, in, in mentorship is the fact that the area that we so often neglect is character development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, character development means when I have the opportunity to get something, between the thousand mm. and the... Yes, okay, we'll continue with that one. I think it's heating up. Yeah. Okay. So the, the thing with the... We come back to your value system. Because integrity tells me it doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. um, I would don't want to be detailed with the corruption in our country, but I believe it's a character issue because so many leaders stand for what they believe in, they have mm -hmm. a clear intention yeah. when they become leaders. Mm -hmm. But there comes an opportunity where they feel like maybe there's a gap, mm -hmm. nobody will know. Mm -hmm. And integrity said, it's not my money, I need to spend it on the people. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we fight for. Mm -hmm. and, and it's easy, if you're in a desperate situation, like you said, if you're really at the point of despair, if you don't have food, you don't have a place to stay, you will do stuff for money. Mm. And it's so easy to judge people because I was not in your shoes. Yes. And I think like, and just stand up and go and find a job mm. and go and do this. And we so easy to, to judge people mm. instead of um, sit with people and say, tell me your story. Mm. How did you end up here? Yeah. How can I help you? Because yeah. even the $5 that I give to somebody who back keep them on the street forever because mm. I make them dependent. Yeah. 
So they know me as the robot. Mm. If the old people will tell the younger one, don't ask that my man money, <laughs> don't give money. Yeah. <laughs> because I said, come and sit with me, mm. tell me your story. And I want to listen, maybe I can change your story that you don't have to back. Mm. Maybe I can t give you a skill or teach you a skill to yeah. do something good. Yeah. So, but to give you five dollars, keep mm. you there forever. Yeah. And, and when we listen to people intensively, we understand why they are mm. at a place like that. Mm. And that's what makes my heart very sad when you listen to people. And so many times when you just drive fruit of past them, luckily not through them, <laughs> drive past them, um, you can so easily make up your own opinion about that. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking them and hear yeah, what's, what's the reason why they end up like that. Because mm -hmm. people end up at different stuff because of things happening to them. Mm -hmm. How many people in COVID overnight just lost the work. They don't have an income, they don't have food, they don't have yeah, anything. Many, many people. And, and, and that's where we come to a place like that. And how do you change it if there's no work? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to see uh, or more intensively listen to stories mm -hmm. of people instead of try to see and think, make assumptions why they yeah. stay back and why they yeah. are, what yeah. do they call it, bad people. Mm, okay, all right, perfect. Uh, as, we, as we come now towards the, the end, I want to ask you one last question. Um, after everything that we've spoken about here, what does success mean to you? If you asked me that question a week ago, it was a different answer. But I was listening last week to a teaching that I worked through. Okay. And it totally changed my mind around success. Mm -hmm. Success is not a place where you reach that and feel like um, I'm there. Mm -hmm. But success is basically whatever you attract to your life. Mm -hmm. Because when people look at your life, they are by the end of the day the people who must define success, mm -hmm. and not me. Because if you say, Today that I'm a millionaire, um, then, then I will be fine. But when you reach your first million, then you want two, and then you want three. Yeah. So there's never a point of contentment, mm -hmm. if I can say it like that. But when it comes to success, um, my success will lay in the people that I work for. It, it gives me such joy if I can bring you to the same place of freedom, to sort out your life, to enjoy it, your life, although I don't get anything out of that. But most of the time when I work with people, my life is sorted. I enjoy my fruit of my choice, but to help other people because there, there's so many things happening around us and one of the things that I think is one of our biggest issues in the country is mindset. We have so many mindsets that we teach and grow over years and we need to change our mindset towards certain things. Okay. So, <clears throat> the last thing that I want to say, we were talking on Monday on the radio station on addiction and one of the things that I said to people, it, it seems to me that if you look at mental health and you look at addiction and you look at all this stuff, there's an underlying financial issue. Mm -hmm. Because addiction with gamble is finance. If you think alcohol, it's finance. If you, <laughs> so we need to tell people that if you want to make money, yeah, you need to equip yourself financially. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of our big problems is debt. Yeah, and if you see how the cash loans make money, they will not sponsor this program. <laughs> <laughs> But it put people in bondage. Uh -huh. And I cannot change your mental health, I cannot change your addiction yeah. if you owe people. Because there's a bondage that keeps you back. Mm -hmm. And we need to start at that end to also see the light again. And that's how we can teach people changing your mind, yeah. changing your future, yeah. to get to a place of success. 
All right, perfect, perfect. A lot of good insights you've given us today, and I, I really appreciate it. Um, a powerful message, and I think uh, inspiring as well. So I think this is the perfect moment to end this little conversation we've had. Once again, I was joined here by Vimpi Farnoy. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Once again, my name is Ignatius Jengura. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Let us know what you think about the video down below. Cheers.